Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Robert J. Smith, who's a financial planner and advisor and founder of Smith Profits. Robert, welcome to the program. Thank you, Mike. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me on. You are welcome. Looking forward to talking with you and looking at your background. I think we could spend about four and a half hours just on your background alone. So I want to learn all about what you do and how you serve your clients, but give us a little bit of your story. Um, How did you get into the financial services industry? Well, thanks, Mike. I actually got in financial services. You can either say by accident or by necessity, but uh, when I was a young fellow, 21 years old, I had a Coca-Cola route and I was actually a home market merchandiser, meaning basically I had a home delivery truck and I drove to all the big grocery stores around Sarasota. And I had the number one route out of all the drivers there, the two years that I was there. And then one day I decided just for a fun challenge to take on the biggest, most muscly guy in the yard, not in a fight, but in a race to see who could unload their truck the fastest. And he had about a hundred pounds on me. And just being competitive and, you know, wanting to beat everybody and be number one, I beat him. And then I found I couldn't walk or stand up straight. So I took myself Uh. straight to the hospital, (laughs) had myself my first hernia operation. And then uh, I asked the physician, you know, what do I do, you know, to get back? He's like, I recommend you get a desk job. And then when I heal up and I go back into Coca-Cola, I find out that you know, my replacements work in my job and they say, and they basically tell me, you know, you've been out for a few months. So we need you to start back at the beginning and work your way up back up to the top route. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, this isn't for me. And coincidentally, I had a friend at mutual of Omaha and he said, we're hiring, come on down. And I got a job inside of five minutes there. And the rest is basically history. Yeah, you kind of found your spot. You you had the the foundational pieces that you probably didn't even realize at that point would be really well suited um, because, yeah. you know, it's not fitting a square peg in a round hole. It's, you know, hey, tell me about yourself. What do you need? What are you, you know, looking for in and then just matching that up? So um, that was kind of the, your first foray into being an entrepreneur, even though you work for a company, because working for uh, someone like New York Life in the uh, financial services, you pretty much become an entrepreneur, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny because as soon as I had that issue with Coca-Cola, which I never thought would happen when you're on top of the heap, you think you're secure, but you're really yeah. not. And then I you know, recalled being a young man and as a teenager and seeing Lee Iacocca get fired as the number two man at the Ford Motor Company in 1978. Mm-hmm. And they interviewed him some years later. And he said, you know, there's nobody secure in America. As long as you work for someone else, you're basically at their will and, and their whim. And the only way to really get ahead is to either work for yourself or to work, like you said, as an entrepreneur. You know, so I would tag up with a lot of large insurance companies, New York Life, John Hancock, Principal Group, Mutual of New York, you name it. So even though you're affiliated with a Fortune 500 company, let's say, you know, you're also in charge of your own business, your own practice. You're a private practice. You're not, you know, captive to anyone and, and you run your own show. So um, I found that to be extremely rewarding. And, and I basically took the advice of Lee Iacocca there. Exactly. And when you came out of, um, uh, was it Pepsi or Coke? Coca-Cola. Yep. Coke. Um, so look at, look at how that, that happens. They need to, it, it's like anything soda related, uh, uh, it's Coke, Pepsi. But when you came out of there, you went into financial services because you had a friend. And I want to draw attention to that because so many times we find breaks opportunities through networking and whether it's finding a, you know, corporate job, it's a lot of times it's through networking. So when you started working in financial services, did you find that that was one of the best ways that you started serving your clients rather than putting up ads in whatever, you know, publication? Yeah, I started out 100% networking and, you know, going back to him, it's the old adage, when opportunity knocks, answer the door. So he gave me an opportunity. I took full advantage and networking and, and, and I did that and I did very well. And, you know, with all the companies I contracted with for years, I was, you know, in the top 25%, you know, of every company nationwide and worldwide for the bigger companies. And, but I wasn't quite there and I couldn't quite figure out how to you know, get over that hump because networking alone wasn't doing it. So then I added going on television, running my own advertisements, doing my own creative advertising, um, you know, publications, books, articles, you name it. And from there, 
not only got to the top 1% nationwide or worldwide in financial services, but actually hit number one worldwide in production with Mutual of New York, the money group Money Money from the Tommy James song and AXA Financial, which at the time was the largest financial service company in the world. So that was pretty rewarding. Yeah. And you know, one thing, as you were mentioning that, it made me think of something. What if you flip-flopped what you just said and um, day one, in working with uh mutual of new york from you know your your friend's introduction you had zero experience you started learning started maybe taking some of the trainings but then you started doing the tv radio publications and all that it would have it would have fallen on deaf ears in the sense that you hadn't really honed in your expertise your messaging your authority and and it was putting the cart it, that would have been putting the cart before the horse but you paid your dues and you learned and you started doing networking and referrals and relationships and maybe made a mistake or two so that then when you started adding in some of these advanced things it just you know created that momentum that much faster yeah so yeah you're 100% correct when i started out i was in sarasota with mutual of new uh mutual of omaha rather and started out and basically paid my dues for a few years there um, paid my dues with a lot of different companies. John Hancock, for one, up in Detroit. I ended up having offices in Detroit, in Atlanta, in Sarasota, in Tampa. But I spent 11 or 12 years, as you call it, you know, paying my dues and just testing because most of your advertising or, or what you do isn't going to work the first time out of the gate. I did get extremely lucky with my first newspaper ad. And, and for those of you know your people who are listening, a newspaper is an actual big piece of paper back in the old days. <laughs> I just used to right. pick up and read. Um, and but touch I and afford, feel, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I was in Metro Detroit. I'm originally from Livonia, Michigan, which is not far from Tiger Stadium, but you know it's about 20 minutes outside the city. And I could not afford to advertise in the Detroit News or the Detroit Free Press at the time. So I just did a little $500 advertisement in the Livonia Observer with a very small circulation. And I thought, you know, how can I be creative with this? And back at the time, Bill Clinton had just be become president. And the first thing he did uh, was enact the largest increase in the in the history of the world, largest tax increase, rather. So I kind of took advantage of that. And I did a, a two-step ad where we had a picture of him looking concerned, wearing a Casio watch back in the 90s. And with a big headline, you know, he just signed the largest tax increase in world history. Call this number to find out what you can do about it. And I put together a report, sent them to an 800 number. Overnight, I had 306 calls off of that. And I had really more business than I can handle. So in my first, mm -hmm. with my first advertisement, I had enough business and referrals from that business because my clients were so thrilled and satisfied at everything we were able to do for them. You know, I made President's Club and all the clubs at John Hancock and several other companies, million dollar round table for the first time that year and basically never looked back. So I did well with my first ad. But after that, there were a lot of ads that did well, a lot of ads that didn't. So you really have to test, you know, your A ad versus your B ad, see what works best and go through. And, and I did a lot of that before I you know, went on television. Um, but it didn't take a whole lot, a lot of time from like 91 to 93 before I started going on TV. And I found on TV, you could reach a nationwide audience and, you know, license in various states. And then all of a sudden the practice goes through the roof, just sheer volume. Yeah. And and now today there's all kinds of mediums and things to reach out to people. But when you're working with a new client now, what is typically the need that they're having that you are providing support for? Yeah, it, it's funny because we don't really niche and see, you know, in the old days, we used to specifically work with surgeons, but they they refer to so much other business that we we didn't want to limit ourselves. And when I was in Detroit, we did a lot of work with the big three. So, you know, the problems in every different industry really come down to the same thing. How do I protect my family? How do I protect myself from rising taxes? You know, I've got to pay employee benefits if I'm a business owner. How can I do that most effectively? So the common problem that I find everyone has, no matter their line of work or business, is how can I bring in as much income as possible and how can I keep as much income as possible? Because I don't remember who said it, you know, 100 years ago, but it's not as important what you make as what you keep. And everybody wants to keep as much as they can. So we've got at smithprofits.com a full client success page where we've got, you know, half dozen of our larger cases and we've got hundreds of them that we just couldn't put them all up there. But examples of things we've done where we've saved clients, you know, $65,000 a year after they've had the same CPA for 40 years, missed the same deductions 40 years in a row. And we, you know, changed that in a single day. We've had other companies yeah. where with Ford Motor Company, we'd help them, uh, when their executives retired and they downsized, they hired them back as consultants. And we were able to show each one of them 
how to lower their benefits costs by 30% and increase their profits 30% at the same time. Mm. Uh, and we've done that with uh, you know physicians, with picture framers, mortgage companies, engineering firms, uh, even other financial services companies. So there's really no limit. I just find that people have the same common needs and the same common desires. I mean, we're all human. We all want the same thing. We want to protect our families and secure our retirements, really. You know, I find that really interesting because too many people get distracted with top line. And you yes. see this on Shark Tank so many times, like, oh, we did uh, $1.4 million last year. And they're like clapping, going hallelujah. And they're like, okay, well, uh, what was your profit? They're like, yeah, we lost 400000 And it's like, it doesn't matter your top line if it's bleeding like a sieve, uh, you know, holes in a bucket. So your point there is giving examples of it doesn't matter the industry and it doesn't matter whether you're self-employed or not. There are ways to plug up as many of those holes in the bucket as possible, because guess what? We can never, ever eliminate 100% of taxes, expenses, there's right. going to be some flow out there. But if you can mitigate and lower that, that means that you're working the same amount, but yet you're keeping more in your pocket. So it feels like you made more money. And that's way better than trying to bring in some business uh, uh, strategy to now work more hours in the day and do more and more and more. And then you feel more frazzled. And then you mm -hmm. look at the end and it's like, where'd the money go? So let's plug up the holes first. Yep, you're absolutely right, Mike. And and that's the first thing you do. And, and we do that with clients when they come in. We take a look at their complete financial picture. And the first thing we do is mitigate their risk, you know, plug up the holes, you know, make up for any shortcomings they've got. And then we look to increase profits later. And it's funny that you mentioned Shark Tank on TV because uh Kevin Harrington down here in Florida is someone we've been affiliated with for years. And you can see a, an endorsement from one of the original sharks from Shark Tank on our website at smithprofits.com. And you know, that man's worth a half billion dollars and, and he does things basically the same way. Let's find out where our risks are. Let's mitigate those. Let's make as much as we can. Let's keep as much as we can. And the way we do that is by helping as many people as we can. And that's the same philosophy we use at Smith Profits. If I can help you, if I can help your business, if I can help your neighbor's business or whoever it is, um, you're going to be thankful. You're going to refer us to other people. And that wonderful cycle of referrals and happy customers, happy clients, it just never ends. And it's a beautiful thing. And, and it's very rewarding because it's not just the income that we make or the income that we help our clients make. It's knowing that, you know, back in the days long ago, when we used to have clients come into the office instead of everything through Zoom, yeah. I used to have to keep, you know, Kleenex on my on my table because um, I'd have husbands and wives come in and the wives would cry like you just saved our marriage or we can put our kids through school. We didn't think we yeah. could or now we can take care of our parents instead of, you know, doing something with them that we didn't want to do or putting them in a Medicaid nursing home or what have you. And then, you know, there were even times where I would have grown men come in and just cry their eyes out because they were able to retire when they didn't think they could or we were able to save them taxes that would have made it impossible for them to retire. So um, I kind of miss the, you know, I'll call them the Kleenex, Kleenex days, but um, it's still just as rewarding through Zoom calls because you get letters from clients. I had a, a client with a very successful nephew on Wall Street, and this lady was 80 years old a few years ago, and she had $2 million to set aside. And she's, you know, when her husband passed and she said, I'm going to give my nephew a um, million dollars because he's 65 years old. He's been trading on Wall Street his entire career. I'm going to give you a million dollars. And at the end of the year, we're going to see who does the best with my money. Um, uh -huh. And this was a while ago. And, you know, I was very concerned with her age and her risk, you know, profile and so forth. So I put her in, you know, very conservative indexed annuities. And um, at the end of the year, her nephew, who was the Wall Street whiz, who she just, you know, loved and loved and loved. And I don't blame her. It's it's family and you're supposed to do that. Um, he took her million dollars and turned it into barely over 400,000. So he lost Oof. about 60 percent of it. And then at the end of the year, we had over an 8 percent profit with her with our indexed annuities. And she's passed since then. But I got a greeting card that she sent me a thank you card. And it reads every single day I wake up, I thank God for you and for your annuities. I can't thank you enough for what you've done for me. And I've had that for years and, and I'll never get rid of it. And uh, she's long gone. But, you know, as long as I'm alive, I'll keep that uh, in my office as a reminder of how important yep. it is to keep everybody's money safe. Because 
it's safety first. Again, it's not what you make, it's what you keep is the most important. You know, it reminds me of the old story, which maybe you've heard before, but it's um, very similar to what you just described. And this is just an analogy, but the this rich old lady uh, wants to hire a chauffeur and she's got these windy mountain roads. And so she sets up this test and goes, whoever can get closest to the edge without, you know, going over, you are the better driver. So you win. And the first guy gets, you know, a foot, the next guy, half a foot, the next guy, six inches, the next guy, like, nine feet away and she goes you've you've got the job because i want someone who is safe i want to be protected and that's exactly what you just described in your example there and there's so many things that i think if someone came to you and said we need to start planning for retirement more aggressively we're behind the eight ball and but yet we don't have monthly cash flow to catch up you know we've got that old 401k right. sitting somewhere and that's fine we can talk about that but we don't have the monthly cash flow to catch up, but what you're talking about doing with mitigating expenses and taxes, now all of a sudden you found it in what they already have. And my question now is, once you find that and it's sitting there in black and white on paper and you go, now we've got X amount per quarter, month, year, whatever, to do right. something with it. What is the, and, and, and you know, if this example about the uh, fixed um, annuities, is that still a strategy or what are some of the things you're looking for to provide some of that safe uh, place to put their money? Yeah, it, it still is. We, we basically want to put people in, you know, places where they can't lose any money. If they want to risk a little bit, that's fine. But when you go back to finding tax savings, you know, lowering their expenses, uh, we've helped people with debt equity in their homes, pulling that out, doing a lot of things where, you know, if you sit down with people, a lot of times you can show them they have money that they forgot about or didn't realize they had, or if they could streamline their finances, they've got a lot more cash flow than than they realize. And number one, you've got to protect everything. But, you know, number two, you can show where, you know, that they can make it work. And if they want to be aggressive, you know, we tell them, you know, I recommend limiting it to five, per, five or 10%, whatever you want. But all of this money we found you is basically house money. And if you want to pretend you're in Las Vegas and risk a very small portion of it, go ahead. But I tell them the same. I've been telling them the same thing for almost 35 years in this business. Only risk what you can afford to lose. You know, if you can mm. afford to roll the dice on something and you think it's going to hit big for you, by all means, do it. If you think you've got the next Amazon, if you think you've got the next Apple, Microsoft, whatever it is, that's fine. But don't risk more than you can afford to lose on one roll of the dice in Vegas. And taking that into consideration, Almost every client has taken a very small amount and done that. And I've never seen anybody hit big or strike it rich, you know, with any get, get rich quick scheme or anything like that. But they've lost money they could afford to lose. And then, you know, the next year when we do the annual review, I tell them, do you want to risk that five or 10% again? No, I learned my lesson. I'm done. <laughs> right. That's the end of it. But it's not a life changing amount that they lost. And if, if they want yes. to do that, it's their money, they can do whatever they want with it. And I usually recommend against it. But at the end of the day, people only feel good if they make their own decisions and, and find their own way. Sometimes people learn right out of the gate. Sometimes it takes a little while. I love but it. It's like the old, uh, fall down. the old quote, Warren Buffett is famous for saying, you know, you never go broke taking a profit. So it might only be that yeah. small percentage when, you know, like in the example of the nephew, he probably was had his sight set on some of these funds or big moves that were, you know, double digit returns, but look where that oh, sure. left you. So if you are getting these solid four and five or six or whatever percent rates of return compounded over time and not losing it, boy, right. that's sure, you know, the slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. Slow and steady does win the race. And it's very hard to play catch up. You know, you can't really chase returns and you can have four or five great years and then you have one bad year. And a lot of times, you know, we'll run numbers on it. It'll take you 10 years to catch up on that one bad yeah. year that you have. So our primary motivation for clients is let's never have that one bad year. Let's take that out of the equation. And we might, yep. you know, not earn as much every single year, but at the end of 10, 20, 30, 40 years, you always come out on top when, you know, when you're not chasing returns, it's just the way to go. And it's well, safe. I think that People is so smart. Night. Yep. Well, if anyone's listening to this going, I've, I need to sleep a little better at night, tell me a little bit more. What's the best way they can learn more and then also reach out and connect with you? Sure. Everybody feel, feel free to call us uh, direct 407-508-0200. That's 407-508-0200. You can get us at a number of websites that'll be linked, I'm sure, uh, by Mike here. But we're at uh, smithprofits.com is the easiest one to remember. And if failing remembering that, it's robertjsmith.com. Those are the easiest ways to find me. And from there, you can find us everywhere else.
Excellent. Well, Robert, thank you so much for coming on today. It's been a real pleasure talking with you. Thank you for having me on, Mike. I very much appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.